Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. And again, thank you to everyone. Um, we were over 9,400. We're heading towards that 9,500. At this rate, we're going to get to that 10,000. I'm going to be giving away that uh, that USG3 and that Edge Switch or Unify Switch soon. Um, so thank you to everyone. And uh, one, what I want to talk about tonight is I get this question a lot. I see this come up a lot. And it's, um, okay, inside my network, I have my Unify controller, and now I want to add a second site, and I want to add those devices and adopt them in, but how do I make that happen? So for this exercise, we're going to do some whiteboarding, and I'm going to show you um, what we need to do to make that happen. Get rid of our uh, stuff here. And we are going to call this um, Unify Multi-Site Setup. Okay, so this doesn't it doesn't matter if you have a cloud key or if you're doing this on AWS or DigitalOcean or whatever, if you've got a, an Ubuntu or Debian box internally, that's kind of what we're going to be concentrating on. So um, what you've got is um, now whether this is a cloud key, you know, that's in your um, network or whether it's a, you know, a server box that's running, uh, you know, uh, Ubuntu or Debian. So your whatever these devices are, they are running your Unify controller. Okay, and then you have a connection over here, and maybe you've got a switch. You know, this could be. Uh, you know, 24 port. It could be an edge. Edge switch, a Unify switch, Cisco, Brocade, whatever. And then this goes over to your firewall. Now, um, I am going to draw, you know, like an edge router. Look at that. That's beautiful. Edge router X. Or it could be, um, you know, it could be the USG. Um, it could be, you know, a Tenda, whatever. Could be uh, any any one uh, firewall. Any it could be any brand firewall. All right. So then out here, whatever your firewall is, has a connection to the internet. And for those of you who don't know who Angry Cloud is, I am going to uh, trademark this. But uh, this is the internet. Okay, so over here on our Unify controller, we've got um, site one up at the top. And then um, we have another site called site two. But site two is physically over here so we've got a unify switch and um, we'll say we've got another unify switch and then down here we've got a UAP I'm a network guy. I'm an IT manager. I am not an artist. So, but I'm hoping that through the magic of colors, you can see that, you know, this is, and this is site two. So, but all of your management is done through the cloud key, right? 
So we manage this site and this site from here. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do, and really the only ports that you need, is whatever firewall that you have. Okay, so first of all, if you your WAN does not need to be static IP. If it's static IP, you know, that's awesome. So it can be static IP. Or it can be uh, DHCP uh, with dynamic DNS. Because we want to assign a fully qualified domain name so that when we send the inform for these guys over here that we are not doing it um, with an IP. We want to use a fully qualified domain name because IPs can change. So what we're going to do over here, and I'm going to get a different color, is whatever firewall you have here, you're going to port forward port 8080, which is the inform port, the default port. Now if you've changed it, then you would change this to whatever. It doesn't matter who this manufacturer is, you want to port forward port 8080 through to this controller. Okay, so, um, you know, if this is, uh, you know, 192, 168, um, 1.2, right? You're going to port forward 8080 to 192, 168, 1 1.2, so the whole world can send um, in inform requests to that. Uh, depending on how you got it set up. You know, if you know your IPs and everything for your remote sites, you could tie it down so that not just anybody can send these. But then what's going to happen is once you have that open, um, these devices over here at Site 2, when you want to adopt these in to Site 2, you're going to, on all of these devices, and even the, the USG, you're going to do, um, you know, you're going to do set inform, and you're going to use HTTP, and then your FQDN colon 8080 slash inform. And so then those are then going to travel through here over to here to the controller and show up as adopting then you're going to adopt them and you're going to send the inform again so um, that that's really it that's really all you need to do so like a lot of the problems that I see you know when people are trying to do multi sites to one one controller you know a singular controller um, it is usually a firewall issue and it is usually um, just getting the concept of this down. So this is a single controller. You know, um, multiple sites. And then once you have these in, now, um, you know, more than likely, if you're doing Unify to Unify, you're going to have the USGN. Um, I actually use edge routers and USGs, but I still forward um, this port 8080. Now, um, if you're not using the Ubiquity Cloud Access and you want to be able to get to the web interface on this, that is a different port. That is going to be um, the web interface is by default 8443. So you would uh, 
you would forward that. Um, but uh, and there's a, there are a few other ports, um, but you know unless you're doing captive portal or things like that, you don't really um, need to worry about that at the moment. But this is if you have multiple. Uh, sites that you want on the same controller and I think that that's going to wrap it up so take a look at this if you um, if you have any questions let me know uh, that should do it for you know put forward that inform port through adopt those devices um, if you've got any questions about this let me know um, you know what actually let's do this just to show you what the port forwarding looks like I'm going to pause this video hop into uh, my router and then we're gonna do that port forward real quick. We'll be right back Okay, so here we are um, inside of an of an edge router um, And so if we were gonna forward that in that inform port we would uh, go to firewall NAT We come over here to um, The WAN interface we would do our WAN interface is face is E0 we do switch zero for our LAN. I would apply that real quick. Now the USG um, is going to be a little different. And um, you know what? We may hook a USG up and show you that as well. So um, the port forwarding rules, uh, what we're going to do is our, uh, you saw in the um, example that I drew that uh, the uh, controller is 192.168.1.2. So we're going to come in here. Original port would be 8080. Uh, protocol is going to be TCP. 192.168.1.2. It's going to be 8080. And uh, unify inform. Apply. And once that's saved, that's done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this video real quick. I'm going to uh, run and grab a USG, hook a USG up, and I'll show you that. We'll be right back. Okay, so here we are at uh, Site 1. We're using our uh, names from our examples. We've got 1.1 and 1.2 is our USG. So um, you've already gone through the videos. You know how to set up dynamic DNS, or you already know how to set up a static IP. So here what we're going to do is we are going to go to the USG. We're going to go to configuration and port forward. We're going to create a port forward. We'll call this unify and form. So here we set it from anywhere or we can limit it. And that port's going to be 8080. And forward IP is going to be 192.168.1.2. And that'll be TCP. And then we'll apply. So uh, our fully qualified domain name for this example will be cloudkeyhowx 5 Dot com. So from site two, we would do a set in form HTTP colon slash slash cloud key dot how x five dot com colon 8080 slash in form and then adopt those vices devices in. So I I tried to make that as simplistic and as kind of generic as I could. If you've got any questions, please post them down there. Please feel Feel free to email me if you need any consulting. Uh, check out the link down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Please use those Amazon affiliate links and that donation link. will keep the lab growing and keep that rolling in. If you do, do need those consulting services, then, you know, uh, go down to h5technology.com. Fill out that form. Uh, if you need anything, please get a hold of me. I'm looking forward to that 10,000 subscriber giveaway. And uh, we will see you in the next video.